Yes, so uh, hello everybody. Um, it's uh, just a moment, I have to close my window. My name is Johannes Müller and it's a, it's a pleasure for me today to, to introduce Marjena Schmidt from Poznan with her uh, keynote talk about Baltic Pontic studies in the fourth and third millennium BC, the space of the Baltic Pontic uh, uh, area there. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to introduce Marjena to you. And uh, I think probably most of you know Professor Dr. Marjena Schmidt. Marjena is uh, since, or we know and as quite since, I would say a very long time. And um, so we have been in, in close contact and, uh, and and different joint projects also I think I think more or less since two decades. Uh, Marjena did her PhD in in Poznan 1994 uh, on globular amphorae in Cuyavia and uh, it was a how should I say it? Uh, this PhD was a milestone. A milestone in the sense that, on the one hand, Magena started to analyze global amphorae, uh, especially also the decoration types of uh, the different vessels in a statistical way. But on the other hand, that Magena also included the environment, the landscape, and uh, the spatial, the, the location of the different sites into the uh, analysis and with uh, different spatial statistics already at that time, it was possible for her to reconstruct more or less the narrative of the globular amphorae in Cuyavia. Uh, but uh, from a world archaeology perspective, Magena is the specialist on globular amphorae worldwide. I mean, they are only distributed between the Black Sea and the, the Baltic Sea. Uh, but uh, it was possible for Magena to, to uh, extend uh, on, the, on the one hand the archives and on the other hand the scientific narratives about the globular amphorae because uh, she could integrate on the one hand with uh, a research stay in Germany also the globular amphorae of the, of, uh, of the Western group uh, into her, her research and on the other uh, side her innovative uh, approach and about the Eastern group of the Global Arm Forey in Ukraine and in Romania was, how should I say it, breaking up all our knowledge which we had before and because of Magena we are now in the perfect situation that in contrast to so many other pan-European or nearly pan-European phenomena. We are dealing with quite a good uh, structured data, data set on globular amphorae. And on the other hand, we have the different uh, models for the interpretation of uh, this phenomenon. So actually, I, I, it's also a pleasure for me to mention that uh, Marjena did in the year 2000 her habilitation. And this habilitation was uh, in Poznan also. And this habilitation was on the uh, late Neolithic of the Northern European Plain. The concentration surely on the uh, Northern Polish areas. But this is also uh, an oeuvre, I would say, or a book in which uh, it was possible for Magena really to link uh, environmental data and archaeological developments, and especially uh, the question of the uh, contemporary existence of different ceramic styles uh, to a, a real uh, fantastic picture of uh, the world at that time. Magena is not only working at the university, but also uh, she is director of the, or she's not only a professor at the university, she is also director of the Museum Poznan. 
And everybody knows that uh, the Museum Poznan is uh, playing in the, how should I say it, high league of European museums. Um, and she's very much also into, um, into uh, material studies. Uh, I, and and the, the, the presentation of the results of excavations. Uh, I mean, if you count, if you try to count the excavated sites in Europe, which are fully published, I think there won't be many sites left. But uh, Magena and Alexander Koshko, uh, they are working since years on the presentation uh, on the results of Opatowice. And I think there are now already seven different books of Opatowice, five, sorry, one, two, three, four, five. And if you have a closer look at uh, these publications, you will discover that again, it uh, was and is possible for Magena to uh, present on the one hand, the archeological features, the context and the archeological finds in a way that you really can work with them if you did not excavate there or if you don't have any background knowledge because of the good structuring. And on the other hand, a lot of uh, different also new uh, natural uh, science analysis are integrated into this study uh, to mention, for example, lipid analysis. So. I don't, maybe I don't want to go deeper now into uh, the oeuvre of Margena. Uh, I think she's now at the moment in, in Tokarivka in Ukraine on an excavation. And uh, uh, yeah, so Margena, the floor is to you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, hello to everybody once more. Uh, Johannes, thank you very much for so kind uh, intro. I want also to thank uh, you for inviting me to give uh, one of the keynote lectures at this year meeting of the European Association of Archaeologists. It's a honor for which I'm really grateful. Um, in my lecture, I would like to, to draw your attention to the problems that for many years remained on the mar margins of the interest of scientists who recognize successive fragments of prehistory of uh, Europe. The area we are going to deal with today is the vast borderland between the west and the east of Europe lies between two seas, the Black, seas, uh, the Black Sea in the south and the Baltic Sea in the north, and is now nowadays as Central Eastern Europe. However, if we depart from this name, which is to some extent politically motivated, we can call it Baltic Pontic contact space with greater use for uh, archaeology. A main thesis is that in this vast area, a long-term structure was formed, created by communities that were in interactions, contacts with each other, and thus in the form of a network for the exchange of cultural information and movements of people. We will deal with its history mainly in the fourth and third millennium BC. However, the earlier period, the 6th and 5th millennium BC, will also be briefly uh, presented. In terms of methodology, the subject matter of my lecture relates to the canonical aspects of archaeology raised in various theoretical configurations since the 19th century. Concepts such as contact, influences, connections, interactions, impact, and others, including aspects of gift, exchange, mobility, and migration, and so on, have been and are still used today, along with accompanying reflections changing over time. My basic premise is a significant and 
multifaceted meaning of material culture for human societies, including its role as medium of social communication. I follow here, of course, uh, Ian Hodel and others who wrote uh, books on this topic. This medium was constantly activated, was subject to permanent revitalization and was demonstratively used by specific groups of people. It's the high social valorization of material culture in its various subject areas that underlies its long-lasting and fundamental diversity, which we now recognize in archaeological, so material sources. What is important? This concerns the polythetic structures of material features, not the monothetic ones, and requires their uh, broad content, content, uh, contextualization. In relation to issues presented in my lecture, research is undertaken on various dimensions or aspects of interaction between human communities, including studies on form of interaction, recognition, recognition of the material identifies, including the issue of imports and imitations, Reconstruction of communal routes and channels, research on biological, mostly genetic effects of uh, interactions. Over past 30, 20 years, such studies have covered the part of Europe that interests uh, us. The results justify the thesis that the Baltic contact space or sphere was formed in the early agrarian period in 6th and 5th millennium BC. In the 4th millennium BC, it obtained a kind of stability and in the next 3rd and 2nd millennium BC underwent several reorganization, culminating in such phenomena as the corded work uh, circle in the third millennium BC and the Trzciniec cultural circle in the second millennium uh, BC. At the same time, uh, it should be clearly emphasized that for the community party participating in the Baltic Pontic contact area, it has never been the only network of contacts. On the contrary, it coexisted or complemented other structures of connections. It was also dynamic and changeable, both in terms of its spa spatial extent and significance uh, in broader cultural contexts. Some words about, uh, about the area natural background of this area and climatic borders. Now let's look um, for, for the map. Uh, the areas situated between two seas, the Baltic in the northwest and the Black in the southeast, uh, the distance between the shores of this um, uh, seas is amount to uh, 1,000 200 kilometers. The territories stretching between these two bodies of water are varied in respect to their natural environment, emphasizing uh, the climatic and geobotanical division of Europe. The land relief between the Baltic and Pontic areas does not create any significant barriers to human and not only to human, but also plant translocations, but is responsible for landscape diversity. In the Baltic portion, uh, glacier accumulation forms prevail. In the Pontic portion, uh, plate formation and less reliefs dominate. On the other hand, one of the most important natural borders dividing Europe into the western and eastern part runs between the Vistula and the Dnieper rivers. Uh, it is clearly visible in vegetation, climate, soil, hydrography and geology. This is the so-called Dniester Book borderline. It runs from the northwest to the southeast, dividing the western part of the continent, where an Atlantic climate prevails, from its eastern territories characterized by a continental climate. Other physiographic and geobotanical boundaries complement the main border. In the western part, they divide the belt 
of northern lowlands plains from southern uplands, whereas in the east they mark out three fundamental geographic East European zones, forest in the north, forest steppe and, and the steppe uh, zone uh, in the south. There are also differences in the hydrography as the area divided into the Baltic Basin and the Black Sea Basin. It could be concluded that the existence of, of more or less recognizable soft natural borders and therefore some obstacle could hinder but not stop interactions between groups of people living in different natural landscapes. However, this, uh, despite the present differences between the Baltic and Pontic areas, does not have significant physical, so hard barriers to impede or prevent human, animal or plant translocations. Uh, even more inspiring is that natural routes have been identified uh, thanks to botanic research on migration of steppe components. It became clear that a convenient corridor runs between the eastern Carpathians and the swampy lowlands in the Pripets drainage. This was the natural rule, route for plant migration as seen uh, on the slide in the example of the genus Artemisia during the late Holocene. Just now, we can, I can add that the same route was used by human groups. Um, and due, due to, uh, to the volume of the topic, I will limit uh, my further consideration to the southern part of the borderland, so between Vistula, southeast Poland, and uh, the Dnieper Main. So the first uh, stage, opening of the Baltic Pontic area. As a background uh, for the processes uh, in question, the proto and early agrarian settlement can be considered in two different forms and two directions. The first was probably a relatively short episode when the Vistula drainage uh, uh, area was used as far as the Kuyave region by the Mesolithic groups of the Pontic region from the Janisławice Rudoj Ostrov cultural circle in the 6th millennium BC. It was exemplified by the site Dembe 29 in Kuyave, mark, uh, marks here uh, on the map with the red dot. However, the question of its continuation or discontinuation is still a matter of debate. Hence, the real beginning of process of form formation of the Baltic Pontic contact area started at the beginning of the Neolithic and is related to the activities of the oldest farmers of the linear pottery cultures of band keramic. In taxonomic terms, it coincides with the beginning of uh, phase two, a music note phase. In the second half of the 6th uh, millennium BC, it's grouped from the upper Vistula drainage basin, so from Lesser Poland, Poland, Małopolska, moved east and southeast. As a result, the uh, linear colonization covered the borderland between the forest steppe and forest zone in the uh, Wołynia upland, and to some extent, encompass the lands on the Upper Dniester and even further uh, on the Middle Dniester in today's Moldova. Such distant connections are confirmed by the results of archaeometric analysis of pottery, which show a strong affinity of linear uh, pottery from Moldova with Lesser Poland, while there is considerable difference from the uh, pottery of Neolithic groups from the northwestern Romania. Two main translocation routes can be assumed from the Lublin upland into Wołynia, so the northern one, and from Lesser Poland, Małopolska, into the upper and middle. Dniester Basin along the eastern slopes of the Carpathians. 
Um, the appearance of linear population in Volhynia took place during the first wave of migration, but permanent settlement took place in the music node phase and was concentrated in the western part of the area. However, scattered sites also appeared farther east in Ukrainian Polisia. The easternmost site so far is Vita Poshtova, marked on the map with a yellow star, located uh, on the outskirts of today Kyiv, only 25 kilometers from the Dnieper River course. It seems that the linear cluster on the middle Dniester was a starting point for the eastward translocations. Until now, their final results in the form of few sites, uh, including Kamiana Zavalia marked with a red star on the map, uh, uh, were identified in the southern book valley in the north Odessa re region. It is situated um, more than 100 kilometers to the east of any other linear uh, pottery microregion um, previously known and was invested and was and is investigated by our colleague uh, Kiusak. The cluster is dated from the turn of 6th and 5th millennium BC up to the beginning of the um, uh, 5th uh, millennium BC. A few isolated linear pottery finds were collected in context of other units. Um, it is important to remember that uh, the linear potter uh, communities here were not the first Neolithic populations, not the first agrarian populations in the territory of Moldova and Western Ukraine, because they, they are older sites of the Krish culture in the region. Another issue introduces sites of local cultures equipped with potter and acquainted with domestic crops. Uh, with the Bugdniester culture being the most debatable. The linear pottery appear in the appears in the region as a foreign and already shaped uh, phenomenon with little connections uh, to the local Mesolithic or Neolithic background. Uh, best recognized settlement Kamiana Zavalia is similar to Central European sites and at the same time is different from any local site of the um, uh, local Bugdista culture. It is not easy to answer uh, a question why the linear potter groups appeared in the East. One uh, of reasons could be the recognition ex and exploitation of local raw material, especially the Volhynian flint deposits. Artifacts made of this excellent raw material were identified in some linear potter sites in southeast Poland. Isolated sites in far east regions may be evidence of an attempt to recognize a remote uh, lands. The settlement process originating from the Vistula area was continued by subsequent Danabian post-linear societies of the Malice culture uh, after 4800 BC and the Lubin Volhynia culture after 4200 BC. Reliques of their settlements were found in the western part of, uh, of Volhynia up to the river Holin and the upper Dniester drainage basin. Thus, it was limited to only a part of a former land occupied by the linear potter settlers. In this two post-linear post phenomena, so Malice and Lublin Volhynia, the Volhynian flint was extracted and exchanged with groups from other areas. For example, thanks to the Malice culture, artifacts made of Volhynian flint reached even the Polish lowland, uh, including the Kuyava region, 
where they were identified in the Brześć Kujawski group or culture. In turn, via the Lublin Wołynia culture, the Flint reached analytic communities in the Carpathian Basin. A special attention should be focused on this last uh, culture, so Lublin Wołynia, dated to the period from uh, the latest. Uh, 4200 4000 BC until 306 uh, 3600 3400 BC it was the first unit uh, to fully form on the borderland more precisely between the Styr and Hoyn rivers and the area is uh, um, marked with a red star on the map from there it extended its range west and southwest to the less uplands above the upper Vistula and the upper Dniester. It is known mainly from richly equipped burials. The artifacts deposited in graves are clay vessels, blades made of uh, excellent types of flint, mainly Wołynia, but also uh, others, as for example, chocolate uh, flint, as well as copper. For example, axes or ornaments. Uh, the links of the Lublin Wołynia culture with the analytic communities of the Carpathian Basin are clear. It is believed that the Lublin Wołynia culture was, or people connected to this material culture, was a supply, supplier uh, of high quality flint to the Carpathian Basin very probably, is uh, they also extracted pure Wołynian copper, uh, ores and, and basalt. This activity as Sapir lasted until the communities of Tripo Tripilia culture of the stage B2C1 appeared in Wołynia about uh, 3600, 3400 BC. Then the Lublin Wojnia culture disappeared under the pressure of two important players who will dominate the next centuries, the Trupinia and uh, Funnel Beaker culture. Summing up, some consequences of the first stage of formation of uh, the Baltic Pontic contact area were. Initiation of population movements from the basins of the upper Vistula and Western Book to the east and southeast. Identification and exploitation of local raw materials such as very good quality flint, so called Wallonian flint, and probably basalt rocks and copper ores. Introducing of these raw materials into wider spatial circulation, including the Central European lowland and Carpathian Basin. And very limited or even absent traces of contacts with older local groups. All that was related to two distinct spatial structures of settlement. The first one, typical only exclusively for the linear pottery culture, consisted of the stable use of territories of Western Wołynia, Podolia and Transnistria, and episodic far penetrations eastwards until the Middle Dnieper. The second one, typical for the post-linear units, was limited to the Western Wołynia, Podolia and Transnistria, areas rich in important raw materials that were extracted and included into analytic exchange networks. Similar types of spatial structures were created in the next centuries, uh, but this time activities of communities rooted in Western and Eastern cultural milieus uh, was balanced. Uh, so the phase of, uh, of a stage of stabilization of contact networks uh, from uh, 3650, 3600 BC, the Baltic Pontic zone became activated thanks to the lively circulation of cultural patterns, ideas and peoples. In archaeological terminology, this can be linked to the expansion 
of two cultural complexes, the Fanel Bika culture in, uh, in the southeast direction and the Tripilia culture in the northwest direction. Both processes uh, have been generally synchronous. Their material representations are identified twofold as the extension of the spatial range of settlement thanks to movements of human groups and as markers of cultural impact in the form of direct and indirect contacts. Of key importance was the gradual extension of such communities as the southeastern group of the Fanel Beaker culture, TRB, as well as the western and northwestern branches of the Tripilia culture located in western Bohemia and on the upper Dniester and in part the middle Dniester. The area in which they were in direct neighborhood lay between the upper sections of the rivers Western Book and Dniester. In respect to Wawinia, there has been recorded uh, remains of two types of Fanebica settlements. Of key importance are the large settlements or upland settlements uh, on the Western Book River in Grudek, Nadbuzhne and Zimne, for example, uh, from both sides, we have rich materials and radiocarbon dating series. In light uh, of these data, the area on the Western Book uh, was settled by a few uh, uh, bigger cultural societies, mainly from the Vistula Les Aprent, about uh, 3650 BC. And the settlement structures function here until. Um, 2600 BC. Apart from these sites, other forms, much more meager or even poor, small, uh, have also been identified, for example, Bujank. There are also, also settlements where a kind of funnel beaker Tripilia synthesis were identified. Małgorzata Debicka uh, from, Rzeszów, from Rzeszów University recently introduced such terms as bickerization of Tripoli pottery making and tripolization of funnel bicker pottery making. Best cases are Nowomalin Podobanka on the Holeni River and Vinniklisi Lisi near Lviv. Thanks to radiocarbon evidence, this type of settlements can be dated to uh, three, more, more or less 3,500, 3,350 uh, BC. What is extremely important and interesting, inspiring, in some sites along with these patterns, so Tripilia and Fanelbika, features of the Baden culture emerged. The area of Podolia was settled by Fanelbika communities mainly on the Dniester. So far, the sites were identified chiefly in the Upper Dniester drainage, for example, in Kotolin, an upland large settlement of, uh, of the Fanelbika culture have been excavated and some imports of Tripilia pottery were found. They are also uh, uh, known, uh, known reverse situation, namely funnel beaker pottery with Tripilia uh, settlements. Far less clear can be said to be the manifestations of funnel beaker communities uh, penetration of this upper southern book basin, uh, an area, an area uh, marked with um, uh, green. Uh, circle on the map, um, and uh, an area that is admittedly poorly explored. Fanelbicker culture imports within Tripilia settlements, uh, however, are identified also in areas located east of, of Vinnitsa. On the middle Dnieper, some references to the final Bicker culture are identified in the pottery and forms of battle axis of the Sofievka group, so Tripilia culture. This could be dated to the first quarter of the third millennium BC if the radiocarbon dating is um, proper. Um, the Tripilian uh, communities appeared sporadically on the upper Dniester and uh, in, in Western Bohemia, in stage B2, a related site is Ostrogzeman, 
uh, a settlement and cemetery. However, a stable settlement on the Dniester is connected only to the late Triplia stages C1 and C2 and can be dated from uh, 2900 BC onwards. Uh, importantly, sites of the Tripilia cover the eastern part of the Upper Dniester Basin, while the western part, uh, uh, in the western part, after uh, 3650 BC, settlements of the Fanubica have been located. On the other hand, in western Volhynia, on the Horn and Styr rivers, settlements of Tripilia uh, began only in the stage C2. The very end of the Tripilia in Volhynia and on the Dniester is dated to the first century of the third millennium BC. Important research in the Yampil region on the Middle Dniester showed that Enolithic funerary rituals uh, linked to the Godinesti group uh, were performed in the period 3350-3200 uh, uh, BC, then in the period 3000-2800 BC, a, young, uh, a younger Enolithic graves have affinities with the pre yamnaya step stage. To sum up, uh, from 3700-3600 until 3000 2900 BC in the area located between the upper curses of the Western Book and Dniester, uh, ero there arose a direct proximity of settlement of two great prehistoric cultural structures, namely the Tripilia and the Family Beaker culture. Material evidence of mutual contacts between the these two communities has a significantly wider territorial radius. The set of markers comes from uh, sources interpreted as imports and imitations. They both document the mutual cultural impact and its consequences, above all, reception of selected foreign cultural traits in, in the local media. Moreover, structures interpreted as syncretic have been identified, those linking the traits of the Fanelbiker and Tripilia culture. In this third instance, it is difficult to exclude the presence of a given community arising from partner groups. Imports refer to mostly clay vessels, but also stone hammer axes or raw materials, mainly the so-called Vowinian flint, but also basalt and perhaps pure copper from Vowinia ores, which originated in the partner milieu. Convincing examples are vessels of the funnel beaker uh, culture found inside houses of the late Tripilia settlement with Zenitzkanka, published like, um, uh, by uh, Gennady Shilpo on the, um, the, the, the site is located on the Plot River. And then stone hammer axes typical for the funnel beaker, but found uh, also at Tripilia site on the Plot, as well as near Vinica on the southern Book River. Of particular importance is the widespread presence of Vowinian flint, identified not only in the southeastern group of the Vanderbiker culture, but also uh, further from the deposits of this raw material, namely in the two other groups of the Vanderbiker, Eastern and Mont. Of exceptional significance are still rare. Um, metal artifacts of Tripilia types, such as daggers of arsenic copper found in Caudus and Guy, both sites uh, located in the Polish lowland, similar to the Usatovo type, and found in the funnel beaker context, of course. In turn, the second category uh, includes uh, imitation of the style of or manner of performing specific objects, form of ornamentation uh, of pottery, components of ceramic mass, way of flint processing, and so on. A record of these finds and arguments for proposed uh, interpretations have been presented in many studies 
uh, of late, these have been presented in summary form, which has removed the necessity uh, to discuss the above in detail. As Małgorzata Rybicka uh, stated, merging of both cultures started probably on the peripheries. A good example is syncretic, uh, of syncretic complexes is the Novomalin Podobanka site on the Horyn River. A set of a pottery uh, was found here, uh, uh, one linking the stylistic and technological traits of the Fandelbeeker and Tripilia. Uh, a symbol of this situation is a typical uh, form of the so-called collared flask of the uh, Fandelbeeker made according to technology appropriate for the kitchenware of the Tripilia, so with crushed shells added to the uh, pottery mass. The presence of the above uh, mentioned types of sources, which are in interpreted as, as material evidence of mutual contacts between communities of the Funnel Beaker and Tripilia, allows to delineate the range of Baltic Pontic territorial contact in the fourth millennium BC. The presence of Tripilia artifacts and their derivates, as well as variety of references to Tripilia patterns. Uh, all this was detected not only in the southeastern uh, Funnel Beaker group, but also in the vast eastern group on the Polish Lowland and in the local Montf group in Kujawy. In turn, the Funnel Beaker artifacts, their der derivates and references to funnel beaker patterns in the Tripilia milieu were identified in the areas on the upper western book and the Dniester, as well as from uh, as on the Stir River from the Stir River up to the middle Dnieper in the east and uh, the middle curse of the Prut in the south. To sum up, the material evidence of mutual contacts is uh, uh, Funnel Beaker, TRB, and Tripilia is not limited to the zone of direct proximity of both great cultural complexes, but also covers territories at some distance away, reaching as far as the northwest and then the middle part of the Vistula Basin, so Kuyab, Helmoland, to the west along uh, the other to the east along the middle Dnieper and reaching the river Prut in the south. As a result, distant communities living in the uh, deep in the Baltic and Pontic lands were involved in the network of contacts. The uh, so the stage of extension of contact areas. The turn of, uh, of the fourth millennium BC introduces a new quality into the processes of people and ideas circulating between the Baltic and Pontic areas. During this period, it is possible to observe the effects of smaller and larger groups of people migrating in various directions. Thus, towards the southeast, people connected to the globular amphora culture and the corded work culture, and the west, north, the west groups connected to the steppe cultures and the middle Dnieper culture, uh, the so-called group. In this context, far-reaching processes of idea formation were disseminated, social, political, religious, as well as related technological innovations. This time, the creation of the scenario is related to a uh, multifaceted and wide-ranging activities by globular and foreign populations, engulfing the vast expansive of Eastern Europe, with the Black Sea plate being especially strongly affected. They had two possible partners. Just on the beginning, the late Tripilia communities, for example, Goldinesti group, and then the steppe communities, both Pre-Yamnaya and Yamnaya. According to our knowledge, a chronological scheme could be presented as, as follows. Uh, 3100-3000 BC, globular amphora populations from the Lublin 
upland must have arrived into Bohemia. They started to spread all across Bohemia, Podolia, and to the south, to the Moldavian upland, forming uh, agglomeration of, agglomerations of the eastern group of the global agriculture and extending east as far as the middle near section of the theater. Influences radiating from these lands traveled far, reaching the steppe zone as well. Their movements towards Podolia and Moldavian upland was rather quick. The basic evidence uh, for all this story comes from graves, for example, in Volhynia, in Podolia, in Moldavian upland. Domestic sites are very weak, uh, weakly investigated. Similar situation uh, is on the middle Dnieper. However, here globular and forest sites are located as far as to the Kiev and even on the east side of the Dnieper. Uh, the globular amphora culture eastern group existed until possible 2400 BC. The so called mixed zone between the central and eastern globular amphora groups, as well as presence of the traces of eastern group deep inside the territory of the central group, uh, mark a permanent contact network uh, between both globular amphora units. It could be either a symptom of a back transmission of traits or even evidence of the back migration of the uh, individuals of the eastern group to the Vistula drainage, especially uh, it is marked in the northern Mazovia and in uh, Kuyav. Of key importance is the material evidence of contacts of the globular amphora uh, communities with steppe communities in form of clear globular amphora vessels and steppe graves. Single finds uh, come from the Preyamnaya graves, for example, Boguslav or Baratovka, but uh, Boguslav is marked with the uh, blue line on the map. But more numerous are in the Yamnaya graves on the steppe and forest steppe border and even from the steppe area. What is important? Genetic analysis confirm the so-called ancient farmer ancestry in the global for individuals from the central and eastern group, uh, both groups. So this ancient farmer ancestry is very uh, good identified in the all global and for uh, investig uh, individuals investigated uh, so far. Until now, any step ancestry has been recorded. However, the farmer ancestry in step individuals near Caucasus could be transferred via global and for uh, individuals, perhaps. Um, at the beginning of the third millennium BC, clear step patterns in the Małopolska upland appeared. This is the period when niche or catacomb, in fact, grave constructions were built and used in the Zwota uh, culture. The origins of such forms in the Zwota would seem to, uh, to be related to the influences of the pre yamnaya groups, eventually also the of the late Tripoli uh, uh, groups. Zwota, uh, culture niche, catacomb graves, constructors, used also ochre and had the custom of deforming skulls. Also in this case, a small series of genetically analyzed individuals revealed only the so-called ancient farmer ancestry. However, perhaps this is a question of, uh, of time. In next centuries, um, 
in this spectacular, uh, in this uh, period, 2900s, 2500s BC, spectacular confirmation of step impact appeared on the Polish lowlands, so deep in the um, Baltic basin. They are known as assemblages of Bożejewice, Krusza Zamkowa type, located in Kujawy, barrels, Kurgans with graves that contained step features. The chronology of these far reach contacts and possibly translocations, in essence, can be placed at the first half of the third millennium uh, BC, and both uh, are uh, uh, dated uh, radiocarbon. Uh, from uh, according to studies completed so far, the origins of the corded work culture in Volhynia and on the Upper Dniester should be linked to the groups that represented the early phase of the corded work uh, complex or circle, which moved across the vast uplands of Central Europe. It should be noted, however, in respect to the Dniester tributary, where various cultural tradition, agrarian and quasi-pastoral met, that, that it could play an important role in the formation of the corded uh, complex or precisely uh, in formation of its southern part according to Piotr Wodarczak. Next, uh, from uh, 2700 BC on the Małopolska upland, Lesser Poland, a regional community was formed, the Kraków Sandomir group, with clearly distinctive traits in the whole Corded Well Circle. Communities present around the uh, Dniester River can also be assigned to, to this group. The maximum range of Corded Well settlement was attained at the same time with the reduction of the Eastern Globular Amphora uh, group. In this regional variant of the Corded Well culture, Catacomb grave construction, called niche construction, were built until the decline of this group, the Krakow Sandomir group, um, 2300, 2200 BC. The ties between the, the Krakow Sandomir group uh, of the Corded Well culture and the steppe cultures are also being investigated in far greater detail. It is possible to find step analogies in some graves, for example, Pałecznica, you can see on the, on the screen, a catacomb, typical catacomb uh, grave. And connection to the step milieu are also confirmed by some spectacular finds that come from the uh, sub, sub Carpathia from Rzeszów Port Hills. For example, a copper axe uh, of possible Caucasian origin in Szczytna, or copper plates from uh, also from Szczytna, as well uh, as Miroci. A step uh, vessel in Święte on the Sun Rivers provides evidence of shifts of small uh, steppe or forest steppe groups into the Vistula drainage uh, about 2400 uh, BC. Genetic analysis confirmed these ties because few individuals from uh, Subcarpathia uh, graves have step ancestry, uh, especially, uh, especially individuals from Szczytno and Święte with this haplogroup R1B1A. The contact route uh, leading across Podolia along the Dniester and to a lesser extent the southern book has of late in research terms grown in importance. A reverse phenomenon is also recorded. The corded work patterns are identified in the steppe Budja group or culture, the northwestern part of the Yamnaya complex, and also on the southern book. The Bujak corded where affinities were discussed in detail by my colleagues Svitlana Ivanova and Piotr Wodarczak, and uh, their publication are well now. Next, about 2500 BC in Volhynia and the region covered by the Book, San, and Dniester rivers, communities appeared 
that represented the Middle Dnieper culture located far, far east. Their presence became a catalyst for a transformation uh, in the cultures in, for the colder, colder were, uh, colder were peoples in this area, which led to the formation of particular cultural group linked to the Dnieper uh, river traditions, known as the Sokal group. The byways of these infiltrations traverse the Dnieper basin, almost probably through Volhynia. This is the third group uh, with the niche or catacomb graves. Also here, individuals with the steppe ancestry has been revealed, for example, in Wupcze. A decline of the Sokal group that was identified by Jan Machnik took place in, in the 24th century BC. And a kind of uh, summer for the third millennium BC. As you can see, the Baltic Pontic area saw very dynamic changes during the third millennium BC. Despite many essential differences, the, territory, the territories between the Vistula and the Dnieper rivers were covered by a network of multi-directional circulation of people, ideas and innovations. We can identify the transmission of cultural patterns from the northwest to the southeast, from the southeast to the northwest, from the east to the west and from the west to the east. It was really a melting pot where also alien, non-local people were incorporated uh, into local communities. All this was rooted in earlier networks of contacts, but a decisive step was opened by the distant migration of the globular uh, communities that extended the area and made contacts with the steppe people. It became the beginning of active contacts into which other groups were gradually uh, included. One of the uh, effects of the interaction was the adaptation of step patterns by communities from the Vistula Basin, both in the economic life and social structure, as well in the funeral rituals. This particular set of movements and interactions gradually commanded an increasingly greater area where agrarian societies as well as quasi-pastoral or pastoral ones functioned. In this context, it is possible to identify, thanks to their presence, direct and indirect cultural markers that indicate the rise of cultural and social transformation, as well as changes that hitherto stable cultural boundaries underwent. No doubt, this proved to be one of the significant foundation stones at the close of the 3rd and 2nd millennium BC for the reorganization of the Baltic Pontic contact area. Probably, the background to the step intrusions on, on the Vistula was the circulation of people and ideas thanks to activity of the globular amphora communities and a consequence of a repeated systematically renewal of direct contacts by these groups from the eastern uh, reaches of Europe with that of ancestral areas on the Vistula. This is a result uh, uh, so the opening of the Vistula drainage basin and its neighboring areas to uh, step people migrating from the southeast. In some, it could create conducive conditions for the formation of the core that were, as Piotr Wodarczak stated uh, in some publications. In the next stage, the vast area of the Baltic Pontic lands was unified into a large contact network, the Trzcinic Komarów cultural site, located between the Valta rivers in the west, Desna and Seim in the east, Lauer Vistula and Neman in the north, and the Dniester and Prut in the south. All what I presented today based on the research and studies of many archaeologists, including my colleagues from Poland, Ukraine and Belarus and Moldavia. Some day results you can find in, in our two international publications, so a journal Baltic Pontic Studies and a series 
archaeologia, uh, archaeology bimaris, archaeologia bimaris, with subsidies, discussions, and monographs. I am grateful to all my colleagues and to our uh, uh, master, Alexander Koshko, for, for the constant inspiration. Of course, they are not responsible for my possible mistakes and simplification. This is the end. Sorry for uh, exceeding the time and thank you for your attention. Yeah, thank you, Marjena, for this wonderful presentation of the uh, interconnections in the Baltic Pontic area. Uh, I think it's really a very, very dense, but on the other hand, also very structured information of the interconnections which took place there. Um, so maybe, uh, maybe I just ask a first question. I mean, what what I by myself found very impressive. Uh, is okay. You showed on show, showed us on the one hand uh, the interlinkage of of different areas or different groups here by I would call them prestige items. So, for example, by the distribution of uh, certain copper objects, or uh, also maybe on the distribution of Wolinian flint. And on the other hand, you showed us that uh, there seems to be quite a lot of evidence that, how should I say it, whole packages or whole cultural groups were involved in the um, in this interlinkage of of the different areas, and also in the uh, inter interconnection which took place then in other areas which were not settled before so what you see from the from the process because you had this diachronic approach from the process of uh, interaction happening here any situation that for example you could observe first a kind of of uh, distribution of uh, this status or price prestige items and then a general change, or uh, was it hand in hand, or is it until now because of the chronological problems not uh, possible really to deep into this question? So, if I can answer. Uh, the question. So uh, this spectacular, um, uh, the spectacular items, they are only, uh, for me, they are only markers of wider and deeper uh, changing, uh, deeper communication. So they are relatively um, uh, easy to identify. But, wow. uh, uh, um, for example, please uh, look at the the question of niche graves or um, catacomb graves they they were not only for um, for um, special individuals in Krakow in the Krakow Sandomierz group uh, they they are dispersed in many areas and uh, were used for different uh, peoples, not only for these individuals with with uh, with the haplogroup R one B one A, for example. <laughs> so uh, uh, this is the answer. We uh, maybe maybe yes. uh, next next um, comment. Uh, we have uh, much more, maybe not so spectacular traits, but for example, visible in the Potter style, this uh, mixed of um, of uh, uh, clay mass, uh, of admixtures, of um, uh, pottery making uh, at all between uh, TRB and Tripilia. Um, what is interesting, there's not so many such affinities uh, in later times. Uh, they are in quite different uh, aspects. So uh, uh, mostly in real life. We have this globular amphora vessels, 
the Yamnaya graves. We have um, step uh, forms of graves in the core that were on the uh, Kraków Sandomierz and Rzeszów uplands. So it was changed uh, through time. Mute. Oh, sorry. Ah, thank you very much for the answer. And I don't know, maybe there are some other questions from the, the audience. Ah, there is one from, from Volker Haidt. Uh, yeah, you can see it. Great lecture, but how about TRB step population? Uh, the Revka derived relations already in the fourth millennium BC as seen in court decorated TRB potteries. So, so he's getting into the typology. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the question of court uh, decoration, this is really uh, not easy to answer because we have uh, still. Um, not a proper base for 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 uh, this um, analysis. Um, in fact, we have court decoration pots in the funnel because culture in, po in the Polish lowland very early uh, in the third phase of TRP. So earlier. Then the shift of the southeastern group uh, to the south and to the east. Um, I mean, we need more uh, investigation on this very interesting topic. Uh, I'm also uh, included in, in the group which try to find a, a proper answer for this question. Volker. Thank you for, for the question. Not easy. <laughs> Mute. No. I don't see another question at the moment, but I, I would have another question perhaps. So, I mean, I've, I found it very uh, inspiring. And uh, so the, 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 how should I say it? The division of the landscape into or this Baltic Pontic area on the one hand to, into this book Niestre borderland with the continental and the Atlantic climate on the uh, on the one and on the other side. Uh, and then I got the impression that, OK, you got the the um, cross step and the forest step and the forest area uh, and I personally, or it is also published, for example, partly by Volker. Um, so uh, I think at the background, there was all the time also the idea that, for example, globular amphorae or corded were uh, phenomena are firstly restricted uh, to the areas which are uh, north of the grass step or west of the grass step, while, for example, Yamnaya is the grass step um, phenomenon and that uh, this kind of cultural uh, whatever or different human behavior in this different ecological zones is not only a kind of uh, of situation let's say around 3000 uh, BC or between 3300 and 2500 BC but uh, that it's uh, also a kind of diachronic pattern. So this division is not any longer vis visible. Am I right? So uh, in fact, in this uh, vast area between Baltic and Pol Pontic uh, uh, seas, we have any hard uh, natural barrier. Yeah, this is this is clear. We have only soft barriers. So. Uh, they, uh, there was really easy for different people to move across, um, and that's right. That uh, the the Yamnaya communities 
are connected the, to the grass step. But, but there are also uh, sites and many kurgans in the forested step. So this is not so uh, uh, clear, strong uh, border between, uh, as, as uh, today, uh, borders, political borders. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think this was, this was quite different and people found solution even for, uh, for a new um, landscape, to, to, to how to live in new landscapes. Um, and we can see this, for example, in the, the map published by, um, uh, by Professor Jan Machnik about this uh, connections in the Corded to a culture in different regions. Yeah, this is very inspiring. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I don't know, another question from the audience? I... If not, Marjana, thank you very much for this really delightful presentation and the keynote. And we wish you all the best for the excavation. <laughs> Thank you. And Thank you very much. Yes. So see you soon again. See you soon again. Thank you very much uh, uh, for all for, for your patience for, for my my talk. Thank you for, for your audience. For you are here. Mm -hmm.